So my question for you today is, do you want to change for the better? Dr. Joe Dispenza says, thoughts lead to choices which lead to action or behavior, which create experiences, which produce emotions, which then go back and affect our thoughts. And a person has 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. 90% are the same thoughts as the same as the day before. Same thoughts always lead to the same choices. Same choices always lead to the same behaviors. Same behaviors create the same experiences and the same experiences produce the same emotions. So we need to meditate on new words to have new thoughts. Etymology, okay, Susan, you will love this, okay. Etymology is the study of words. Don't mix it up with entomology, which is the study of insects, including ants. Study and application of the right words can, can however, make you a giant, okay, I'll make you a giant. Okay, so we are talking about how to be giants today. I'm going to start by sharing with you some quotes from people about the power of language, the power of words. So let me share my screen uh, while, I, while, I, while I do that, okay? So that you can read the words for yourself. Okay, so this is about the power of words. There is a language of success and a language of distress. There is a language of progress and a language of regress. Words sell and words repel. Words lead and words impede. Words heal and words kill. That's Stephen Covey. Okay. My task, which I'm trying to achieve, is by the power of the written word to make you hear, to make you feel. It is, before all, to make you see. Joseph Conrad, the author. Don't ever diminish the power of words. Words move hearts and hearts move limbs. So you take action. Okay. This is Hamza Yusuf, arguably the world's most influential Islamic scholar. Words are seeds that do more than blow around. They land in our hearts and not the ground. Be careful what you plant and careful what you say. You might have to eat what you planted one day. The best word shakers were the ones who understood the true power of words. They were the ones who could climb the highest. So the right words will help you climb high. Okay, this is Marcus Zusak. There's indeed power in words. Most of the lasting change that has been forged in the history in this, of this world came not from a wielding of the swift and bloody sword of battle, but from the shaping scalpel of ideas. And what are ideas without the words to deliver them? Mark Dunn, author and playwright. Jim Rohn said, words do two major things. They provide food for the mind and create light for understanding and awareness. J.K. Rowling said, words are, in my not so humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. This is the storyteller, okay? Our most inexhaustible source of magic. I really, really love that. Okay. Words are the scaffolding upon which we build our lives. Words are the scaffolding upon which we build our lives. Barbara Lynn Vernoy. The limits of my language means the limits of my world. Okay. So we want a limitless world Let's use language to help us. This is a chef and restauranter, Tim Hollingway. I found a word and carefully placed it next to another. Soon I had a bridge and a pathway to a wonderful future. I really, really love that. Your know, words are a bridge and a pathway to a fantastic future. <clears throat> Lucy Maud Montgomery, a Canadian author, said, I read, I read a book. No, I read in a book once that a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, but I've never been able to believe it. I don't believe a rose would be as nice. It was, 
if it was called a thistle or a skunk cabbage. Okay. So words, uh, beautiful words have beautiful meanings. There exists for everyone a sentence, a series of words that has the power to destroy you. Another sentence exists, another series of words that could heal you. If you are lucky, you will get the second, but you can be certain of getting the first. Okay. So you're going to get words that, that hurt you. <laughs> you need to get the second, a series of words that heal you. <clears throat> Nelson Mandela said, it is never my custom to use words lightly. If 27 years in prison have done anything to us, it was to use the silence of solitude to make us understand how precious words are and how real speech is in its impact on the way people live and die. How real speech is in its impact on the way people live and die. Create your brand with your words and establish it with your deeds. Okay, create your brand with your words and establish it with your deeds. This is uh, Ghana's foremost authority on personal branding and digital publishing, okay, relevant to us. Finally, Libo brand, Libo brand. Okay. Uh, there's a power in the words that come out of your mouth. Now imagine those words coming out of your red lipstick mouth. They even have more power. So, um, you know, I really like that because, uh, oh my goodness me, I think I've overshot. Okay, I'm supposed to have stopped at Philip Dick. So, back to, um, <clears throat> back to, uh, introducing this book. So I read in this blog by this lady Liz, she said that the words we choose are like the stories we tell. Without realizing their effect, choosing and using them changes us, how we see ourselves, how others see us. Consider the phrases you use without thinking, like answering, I'm fine, when people ask you how you are. Try saying, I'm fabulous, and watch how that changes your day. Because in your mind, you know what the meaning of fabulous is. So when you use that word, it will change uh, how you see the day. In the next three months, I will be looking at 11 words from the book Aspire by Kevin Hall. Okay. Let's examine the title word Aspire first. Okay. I checked in the, in, in the, in the dictionary, synonym other synonyms for aspire are pursue, crave, yearn, strive, desire, seek, long, hanker, try, struggle, want, wish, dream. Okay. So we're familiar actually with the word dream. Okay. We're also familiar with the word struggle, struggle in a positive sense. Okay. It's like the Olympic athletes struggle to the finish line. That's the word aspire. Okay. As an intransitive word, it means to seek to attain or accomplish a particular goal. For example, she aspired to a career in medicine. It usually means something higher. So another in, intransitive word, the meaning would be to ascend, to soar. It's a personal ambition. It's about dreaming to accomplish something, especially for something great of high value. So to aspire is defined as to desire something or to work toward a goal that you strongly want to reach, to have a great ambition or an ultimate goal, to desire strongly. So what about the book itself? Okay. Let me share with you what some people have said about the book. Okay. In Goodreads, it says an expert recognized for his uncovering the hidden and often secret meaning of words, Kevin Hall now shares his wisdom with us all. In Aspire, he teaches readers to understand what words mean in their purest sense and unlock their importance as they develop a thoughtful new vocabulary. Okay, so we want to improve our vocabulary by at least 11 words, but there's richness behind those 11 words. As Stephen Covey so beautifully elucidates in his foreword, this masterfully written book will help you understand that words have an inherent power, a force capable of 
lighting one's paths and horizons. Used correctly and positively, words are the first building blocks for success and inner peace. Used incorrectly and negatively, they are capable of undermining even the best of intentions. This is true in business, in personal relationships, and every other walk of life. By focusing on 11 words, one per week we are going to cover, Aspire shows how to use these words as building blocks for success and inner peace. The words, from the very familiar to the very unusual, will become touchstones in personal development and in business. Each of these 11 words has an uplifting meaning. And I won't go through these words with you now, but I'll tell you that the first word which I'm going to talk about tomorrow is genshai. So that's an unusual word, okay, genshai. So you've got to come in and listen to what genshai is about. So I wanted to end with three quotes, which I actually shared with you already, but you've probably forgotten them. So let me share with you uh, these last uh, three quotes, okay? because I think they're significant. There exists for everyone a sentence, a series of words. <clears throat> so, sorry. Okay. There exists for everyone a sentence, a series of words that has the power to destroy you. Another sentence exists, another series of words that could heal you. If you're lucky, you will get the second, but you can be certain of getting the first. So as people out in, in, in sales world, as people out there um, going into the unknown, okay, we are going to face words from people uh, who you know, could destroy us. Okay? But Get a vocabulary, get a mindset okay, that will heal you. Nelson Mandela said, it is never my custom to use words lightly. If 27 years in prison have done anything to us, it was to use the silence of solitude to make us understand how precious words are and how real speech is and its impact on the way people live and die. And finally, um, Bernard Kevin Klein says, create your brand with your words and establish it with your deeds. Okay, as I said, for us in uh, social media, this is really, really important. Okay, The words we use and how we behave as a result of understanding these words uh, will attract people to us. And finally, Author Libo Grant says, there's power in the words that come out of your mouth. Now imagine those words coming out of your red lipstick mouth. They have even more power. Okay. So tomorrow, um, we have got Tuesday tips as usual from this one, and she'll surprise us with some really, really practical tips. So I hope you found out today's uh, introduction to, uh, to the next three months where we go into depth with some beautiful words that will change impact our lives. See you tomorrow.